All right, friends, you might remember from last week, we were talking all about the ocean habitat. What lives deep down below on the ocean floor? What swims in the middle? And what animals live on the seashore? This book is pretty cool, friends. We're gonna take a closer look at all of those hidden animals that live on the seashore. And of course, we're gonna grab that flashlight from last week and shine a light through the page to see and explore a whole lot more about some of the animals that hide and live in the seashore. You ready? A tide pool is bustling with life. If you look closely between the rocks, beneath fronds of seaweed, and on the sandy bed, you will see the animals living there. All right, friends, you ready? We're gonna take a flashlight and hold it up behind each page to find out what is hidden in and around these tide pools. A tide pool is a hollow on the seashore. Can you see this, friends? Here's the beach. And when a big wave comes crashing in, some of that water gets trapped here and creates a shallow hollow where lots of animals can live. Can you see what happens when the tide comes in? The seawater flows in with the tide and fills the tide pool. Creatures that live in seawater have waited for the tide pool to fill. What's hiding in these shells? Bubble, bubble. Mussels keep their blue shells tightly shut while the tide is out. Now they open their shells and begin to feed. Once there's enough water for the mussels, the shells will open up and they can start feeding. Creatures cling to the rocks around the pool. Who could live in shells like these? Okay, right, let's get our flashlight out, friends. Flutter, flutter. Barnacles come to life in the water. They reach out their feathery legs to wave tiny pieces of food into their mouth. You see the little food drops? Other creatures are waking up too. What are these jewel-like animals? Do you know what those are called? Shut it out if you know. Okay, let's take a flashlight to the backside and see. That's right, these are called sea anemones. Can you say that? Sea anemones. Look at them all stretched out. Two sea anemones are searching for food with their long, wriggly tentacles. They eat small fish and shrimp. Dark nooks under rocks make perfect hiding places. Can you see who is resting here? Any guesses? Yep, a crab. Click, click. A crab holds its pincers up, ready to grab a tidbit to eat. Here it is down here, the crab is on the move. But there's another hunter nearby. Friends, do you see any other creatures here along the seashore? <gasps> oh, let's get our flashlight out. Hold tight. A starfish uses tube-like suckers on its underside to hold on to the rocks. Another animal with suckers is resting in the tide pool. Can you count its eight arms? Friends, do you remember what animal has eight arms? We saw one of these down below in the ocean. And we talked about lots of different things that this animal can do. Any guess is what it's called? Let's get our flashlight out and see what we can find. That's right, the octopus. It has eight long arms with suckers on the undersides. There they are. And it crawls slowly over the rocks. 
There's another animal hiding in the sand. Only its eyes can be seen. What do you think it is? Any guesses, friends? Can you spot the eyes? <gasps> Let's see if we can see anything else with a flashlight. Splish splash. A small fish lives in the tide pool too. It hides under rocks, in seaweed, and in the sand. Another tide pool creature lives in this large shell. What do you think it could be? I think you might have a pretty good idea, friends. Do you remember which of our animal friends lives in a shell? We read a story about this animal last week. That's right, a hermit crab. Okay, let's see if we can see its body with a flashlight. Surprise! A hermit crab has made his home in the empty shell. Good thinking, friends. Now this whelk is sharing its part of the tide pool with small swimming creatures. Can you see any? Hmm. Okay, let's try with our flashlight. Shrimp move backward by quickly flicking their tails. Their see-through bodies are much easier to find when they move. Something is waving in the water. Which plants live in the sea? Can you think of any friends? Slick and slimy seaweed anchors itself to rocks and grows in the sun. What is slithering along in the seaweed? A whelk is looking for other shellfish. It can drill a hole through a shell to eat the creature inside. Whoa! A sleek otter has spotted something. Can you see what she wants for dinner? I don't see anything, do you? Okay, let's get our flashlight out. Ouch! Most animals stay away from these nasty spikes, but a sea urchin is a tasty meal for the sea otter. Which orange-beaked bird lives on the seashore? Can you see it there sticking out? Squawk! An oyster catcher is calling out to other birds. Can you see what the oyster catcher has found in the sand? Hmm. We might need our flashlight for this one, friends. It's a clam! The oyster catcher's long beak is perfect for finding buried food. So there they are. All the clams are underneath the sand. Slowly, the tide retreats, and with it, much of the water in the tide pool. Its animals and plants are resting again, waiting for the next tide to come in. All this water is going to get carried back out with the ocean wave. And the animals here We'll have to wait until the next tide comes in, when all the water rushes over these rocks and fills up the tide again. This book has so much great information about seashores. We're going to take a look about some of the other parts and details of the tide pools. When you find a tide pool, you can look all around it and see what you find. Remember to look under the seaweed and in dark places. Here in the sand, remember, clams have a soft body inside two joined shells. They burrow under the sand and push a feeding tube into the water. Clams pull in their feeding tube and snap their shells shut when they are in danger. Whoa, what about our friend the whelk? Whelks are sea snails that feed underwater. When the tide goes out, they pull their bodies back into their shells. They seal themselves in with a sticky substance that also glues them to the rock. What about crabs? 
Crabs visit tide pools to feed on the other animals there. They catch them with their large pincers. Walking under seaweed and resting in cracks keeps the crabs hidden from hungry birds. Speaking of birds, here you can see a gull. Gulls fly down to tide pools and catch shelled creatures in their beaks. They fly up high, then drop the shell onto rocks. This cracks the shell open so that the birds can eat the soft meat inside. See it there with the shell in its mouth? Oh, here's our friend the sea otter. Sea otters grab sea urchins and shelled creatures from tide pools. To get at the meat inside, they float on their back with the caught animal on their tummy and use a stone to crack open the shell. Hmm. Uh-oh. Some animals get trapped inside the tide pools. The fish in tide pools are often the young of larger fish that live in shallow seawater. They get trapped in the pools when the tide goes out. They can hide in the sand and under seaweed and under rocks. Here we have our seaweed. Seaweed anchors itself to rocks with a root-like hold. Its fronds float toward the surface of the tide pool and make food from sunlight. Many tide pool animals feed on the seaweed. Oh, we know about this animal, friends. What animal is this? That's right, an octopus. Now we know that octopus can be hard to see because they can change their color to match their surroundings. They can also position their bodies so they look like rocks on the tide pool floor. Do you remember what we call that, friends? This is a pretty big word, and it starts with the letter C. C. That's right, camouflage. Great memory, friends. Now, lots of tide pool creatures get their food by filtering it from the seawater. Each time the rising tide refills the tide pool, it brings with it fresh nutrients and food for the creatures that live there. Yeah. So every time the tide comes in and the water gets trapped inside here at the seashore, fresh water and new animals and nutrients will fill this pond for lots of different animals to eat and feed on. Pretty cool, huh? All right, friends, that wraps up our day talking about oceans and the seashore. I can't wait to read more books with you next week. I'll see you next time.